Hi everyone, my name is Scott Blows and we are here to talk Life is Strange today and answer some of your questions. Um, so before we get started, uh, obviously you can see we've got a special guest that wanted to come in and say hi. Uh, so this is Ashley Birch, the voice of Chloe, as you probably all know. Um, and yeah, she just wanted to swing by and say hello quickly. Yeah, unfortunately I have to run so I can't stay around and answer questions. But I just wanted to say hey, thanks for playing the game and thanks for liking Chloe. And <laughs> yeah, do you want to do, pretty much Do you want to do a really quick Chloe line? Oh, what's a good Chloe I'll line? <laughs> what's your favorite Chloe line? Oh, oh there's a lot. What's your favorite Chloe line? Um, <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> you could say, uh, so many lines. Welcome to American Rust, my home away from hell. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> the junkyard one. Welcome to American Rust, my home away from hell. <laughs> so good. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. So cool. All right, well, Ashley's got a dash. I got to run, but, uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for swinging by and saying a quick hello to the fans. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. All right. It's good to cool. meet all of yeah. you. Thank bye you. Bye bye. All right, bye, Ashley. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so, uh, guys, let's talk Life Strange. So with me, I've got Raoul Barbe, the co-game director, Michelle Koch, co-game director, and Luke Badaduce, the producer. Hey. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so we, 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 we know each other quite well by now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah. A so little. <laughs> um, cool. So we're just going to get you in the mood for Life is Strange by playing you a quick trailer. Uh, for those of you who haven't played the game, this should uh, it'll explain a little bit about what it's about. So what do you want? You don't know who the fuck I am. What are you doing? Get that gun away from me, psycho! No! My name is Max Caulfield. I'm 18 years old. Years ago, my family moved away and I left behind my childhood. After five years, I'm back in my hometown, Arcadia Bay, Oregon. Now I'm studying photography at Blackwell Academy, my new home. In the end, it's still high school, which kind of sucks. Then there's Chloe. Home shit home. Let's dance! Or take my picture with your new camera. Come on, rock out, girl! Then something happened. Something that changed my life forever. Max, what's going on? Where am I? There's something else I have to tell you. Holy shit. Talk to me, Max. Oh, no! I discovered I could reverse time. Max, start from the beginning. Hey! Max? Chloe? Oh, Dan, Max! In the bathroom today, you set off the alarm. You hell saved my life. Don't ever touch me again! Then I realized I had a choice. Hey, you okay? And the power to change everything. Bang! What the hell? Come on, slowpoke! If I see you here again, you'll learn all about real trouble. So, what would you do now? Okay, so um, hopefully that just gave you a little insight into the game if you hadn't already played it. And for those who have, that was just to get you in the mood for our session today. Um, so I know you guys have been really, really active talking to the community. Um, you know, they all love the game. Uh, we've, they've all been discussing it like crazy. Um, 
So has there been any particular feedback from the community that um, you know has caused any changes in the development of future episodes? You know, what can you say about that? Yeah, like you say, we got a lot of feedback from the community, and it was after the episode one release, it was quite a huge surprise to see so many fan arts and so many reactions and series on forums. So we are reading a lot, uh, a lot yeah. of forums, Twitter, uh, Twitch, a lot of, of feedbacks from the players, and this is what is really cool with the episodic format for a game. It, as we are doing the game uh, episode by episode, we are currently working on episode four. We can take into account some feedbacks or even some characters that the player like. Uh, so we can uh, change a, a little some scenes, adding some characters, adding adding some scene, modify a, a little bit some scenes to yeah. Because we can see a lot of feedback, so we can modify the some of the next episode. But we will uh, stick to the main storyline because we have the end of the. We have already uh, written the whole story arc, so we will keep this one, but we can slightly modify it depending on those feedbacks. So it's, it's quite great to see that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so there you have it. Uh, your feedback is um, you know, being looked at every day. Uh, and <laughs> every you know, day. Uh, there might be some slight changes. We don't know. But we'll have to wait for 4 and 5 to kind of see what happens. Um, so there are many choices you can make throughout the game. Uh, so were there more... Uh, were there some scenes that were more complicated to kind of develop or uh, kind of get your head around? Uh, what were they? Um, yes, I, I think w when when you work on a game with choice and consequences, like we are, we have so many choices we take into account that everything is quite hard to plan. Mm. We have, you know, in each episode we have something like four to five major choices and ten to fifteen minor choices, and. Of course, it starts to start to pile up after each episode, and we're still taking all of them into account to modify the the story and the journey for the player. Um, but some of the biggest scenes have been harder. Um, and for us, what's the most important is to to deal with. Um, you know, we, we are dealing in, in Life is Strange with some really serious themes like um, social media bullying, um, yeah. domestic violence, um, teen pregnancy, and other really other subjects that are really close to reality and close to what mm. it is to be a teenager in, in America. And for those scenes, that's, that's those the scenes where we are taking the most of time to be sure that we are handling them in a, handling them in a very um, right way. We, so we don't want to, to trivialize any subject and really to speak about those subjects in, a, in, the, in the best way possible. So we are doing a lot of researches. We are working with our, our writer, Christian Divine, who is uh, living in San Francisco, to be sure that everything is working. And so, w so we are, so we won't really um, deal with those subjects in, in the perfect way possible. Awesome. OK, cool. Um, so Max, obviously the main protagonist, the main character who you play, um, She's a character that a lot of people can relate with. Um, you know, she's not a superhero. She's just kind of your average teenager. Um, she, you know, she's like a, just an everyday hero. Um, but was it always intended for Max to be quite introvert and shy? Um, or were there every, any other concepts for her character? Yeah, Max, one, at the very beginning of the project, um, when we start to write, it begins really with... Uh, the re rewind mechanism and all this choice and consequence theme we wanted to have in an adventure game. So we, at the beginning, we had a lot of main characters. Max was one of them. And little by little, when we try to figure out how the game will be with this power, the fact that it's not like an offensive uh, power. So Max begin to to become the perfect uh, hero and the per the perfect character for the player. So. It's little by little adding some layers to to those characters and to Max uh, that she's becoming what she is. But the idea is, was really to talk about those choices that is sometimes difficult uh, also to take some choice. So Max was, like you say, at the beginning of the game, a little shy, introvert, but she will evolve, she will uh, grow up, sorry, yeah. I think because of this power and also because of, of course, Chloe. Uh, this is this kind of friend you have that you don't always like how she behave, behave but uh, she will take you to um, maybe other paths. Uh, and I think Max will grow up, and you will see, of course, in episode four and five that she will change uh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've definitely noticed uh, as each episode has gone on, 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, each episode has gone on. Um, we're seeing Max kind of play with her power a little bit more. Um, and she's almost getting a little bit more confident with it, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, so that's really, really cool to see that, yeah. that kind of character arc yeah. and that and development. It, and it was also a good entry point to this uh, universe to have Max. Like this. And we wanted also yeah. to talk about that uh, because I think we all have difficulties when we were teenagers. And it's, it, it's a very violent world. Uh, mm. uh, high school world could be really difficult. So some it Max was a perfect character to talk about all this. And yeah, that's also why we created Chloe the way she is because at, in the beginning they are really polar opposi opposites, mm. um, and Max is shy and introvert, when Chloe is uh, angst-ridden and extrovert and punk rock, with this punk rock attitude. And in the course of the games, of course, both of the characters are evolving and getting to to get to to rekindle their friendship and get some of their some some of Max's characteristic will, of course. Um, change Chloe and, and, and the other way also. And in the end, this is a coming of age story. So that's really mm. the, the idea to have Max <coughs> evolving through the whole game. Yeah, brilliant. Um, great. So um, yeah, this question is <laughs> this question's pretty good. Um, so a lot of people are curious about the dough or the, the, you know, the spirit animals that we see throughout Life is Strange. Um, you know, there's quite a lot of theories about it. Um, I, for one, am, I'm pretty interested to see where it's going. <laughs> um, you know, without any spoilers, guys, don't worry, we're not going to spoil anything for you. Um, is there anything you can kind of tell us a little bit more about your decision to kind of have these elements in the game or, or you know, a little bit about these kind of spirit animal? Mm. Yeah. We right, from we yeah. right from the beginning, we, we wanted this, this story to take place in... Um, in a small town in in Oregon, mm. and because we, we we really we really saw that this natural elements, the ocean on one side, the forest on the other side, was great for b bringing the feeling of nostalgia and the feeling of of lon loneliness, of isolation. We wanted to have in, in the game, and so of course those animals we won't spoil w what exactly is behind this, but <laughs> they play of course uh, uh, an important part in the story, as as the doe is guiding Max in the very beginning, in the first scene, uh, in, in the last scene of episode one. And so we can't say much, but no. um, you, you will, the player will find out exactly uh, awesome. what, and it what, what It's what also why we chose Oregon, yeah. uh, really this small town to be in Oregon. We wanted really to feel this, uh, yeah, this na the nature and all those animals. So yeah, we, yeah. we asked the level designer to add a lot of squirrels, birds, <laughs> uh, to, to feel also this. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, squirrel, the squirrels are amazing. <laughs> 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 I love, I love them. Yeah. Uh, very cute, and uh, there's lots of them doing different things. Uh, I think <laughs> my one was the jumping up at the fireflies. He's my favorite. <coughs> cool. Um, so I know you guys are massive music fans. Um, music is a pretty huge part of the game. I would say it's very integral to the atmosphere and, and kind of the feel. Um, you know, was there always going to be licensed music by known artists? Um, you know. The way the game uses the music is quite unique. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, since, since the beginning, I think we were working with music on our scene. Mm. Even at the beginning, we we didn't have any rights, but we, we use them on on the scene just on the prototype to to see how it will fit with the universe. Um, yeah, since the beginning, we wanted to have uh, so the score and some licensed tracks from known artists. Uh, Thanks to Square, we were able to have like more than 15 uh, licen license tracks, so we are really happy uh, uh, with that. But the idea was also to use those tracks to tell something about the universe, tell something about the characters. That's why, for example, Chloe in episode one will listen to a Spackler's title, when Max will maybe listen more to uh, like folk, neo folk, uh, mm -hmm. indie um, uh, songs. So. This is this tell also something about the character and uh, the score is uh, made by, by Jonathan Morali who is a French artist uh, yep. from the band Sin Matters. You can hear two songs of Sin Matters also uh, in, in the game, in the corridors, the scene of the beginning and the end of episode one. And Jonathan is a huge fan of uh, game. He's the first uh, soundtrack he's doing for game. He's doing a lot of soundtracks for movies in France also. But yeah, we are so happy to work with him. Uh, we are huge fan of him. So it, yeah, I think it gives something uh, unique with the score, uh, the music you can listen in the menu, in the compass. Um, yeah, I think the mix between this score and the license tracks 
for s it's here since the beginning, but we are really happy to be able to, to keep this. And uh, also, um, we wanted to use the license tracks uh, in a diegetic way also. So it means it, it will be interactive. This is a player who choose where when she wants to listen to uh, a song, if you want to play the, the scene with this song or not. This is what is really great with video game, it, that the player will choose how he want to uh, play this scene uh, on a slow pacing or maybe uh, to go f fast directly to the next scene. So yeah, this is something where the music, uh, I think it gives a, a loss to the game. So we are really happy with that. Really important. Excellent. Um, so, uh, as as a uh, community manager, I, I see a lot of the kind of the theories and the kind of uh, the fan art and the cosplay. Um, you know, what did you imagine such a great reaction from the community? <laughs> there's there's a lot of it. Um, no, it's, it's beyond what we <laughs> could have imagined. Like, like uh, since the, the release of the first episode, we've seen yeah. so much like like fan arts. <coughs> like people are sending us gifts. You yeah. know, yeah. so yeah. it's kind of crazy. We never <laughs> seen such a thanks, good thanks for <laughs> 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 Yeah, for yeah. all the fan art. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy. It's so it gives a strong um, a support for the teams because uh, as we are working, still working on the episode, it's really exhausting. It's like you have to ship five games mm. <laughs> in a uh, in a short period. So. Uh, after each release, we can read, like we said before, on Twitter and on Reddit and everything, the, the, the good feedbacks and it gives a moral boost to the team. We share the, the good, the best comments and um, also we we had like some fun watching the videos, you know, the, the guy who streamed the, the game. We watch a lot and the seeing the reaction to the like most intense scenes, to not spoil uh, the people who haven't played, it's like uh, amazing for us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, your guys' reaction has been absolutely fantastic uh, so far, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, please keep it, please keep it coming. Yeah, and it's also what is great with uh, again uh, episodic format, it bec because there is some time between each episode. I know it, it's hard mm. sometimes to wait, <laughs> but it allows yeah the community to grow and to talk together and to see that is really something we we didn't expect that at all, and we no. didn't even yeah. think about it that this time between each episode. It, yeah, it gives us a lot of strength and uh, yeah, it's we quite unique. Yeah, we've seen some people asking why you don't release all the episodes yet. It's just because, <laughs> yeah, we're still working on it. There's a lot of work to do. So we don't just hold the episode just for the sake of making people wait. And, and so, yes, really thanks everyone <laughs> for the, the feedbacks yeah. and, and, the, and the fan art and the cosplay. It's just, just awesome. Yeah. yeah, so uh, long nights. Long nights getting those extra episodes ready. <laughs> um, I can't wait for episode four. Um, Oh, don't worry, we're not going to do any more spoilers. <laughs> um, but can you can you give us a little like what can you tell us about episode four? Like what are the sort of themes we can expect? Not oh. much. <laughs> it's hard to tell anything Joker. without spoiling. Um, uh, what we can say is that we really think that the player will will be surprised again, and we are making our best to make it again the best episode possible. And and we really hope that they they like it. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting. I wasn't <laughs> expecting a big answer. <laughs> um, it's the best we can do. But uh, we, we like to we like to please the fans here. Um, okay, so y we asked you guys what questions you would love to ask. Don't nod, and there was a lot of them. Um, so we're going to get through as many as we can. Uh, we had some really great questions sent in, so thank you everyone that has sent in. And if we do read your question, um, congratulations, because you will be getting uh, one of these special shirts <laughs> that we've got designed. I don't know if you can read it from where I am, but it's uh, Go Bigfoots, uh, yeah. the team at Blackwell Academy. Um, so yeah, we will be contacting you and sending you one of those out if your question was picked. Okay, so first question uh, from Leanne. Um, what was the, what was your biggest challenge during development? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Leanne. <laughs> hard, <laughs> hard question. Yeah. No Making pressure. the game. Um, <laughs> we can. The time, I would say, but yeah. uh, on the creative way, you can answer. But just for the yeah, on the production course. side, yeah, we we hadn't expected uh, so much work for an episode game. Um, at first, the game seemed smaller. It was a small team. The 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 budget was small. The it's still a small budget uh, and small team compared to the AAA games, mm. but the the game needed more time, needed more more people, and and it's really complicated to have an episodic game. You have s uh, many cons constraints, like everything needs to be here for the first episode, code-wise, because uh, then if you want to update something, it's really complicated. So 
it's it's a real struggle on many topics on the production side and it's quite exhausting for the team as i said before but also on the creative side uh, it needs a lot of work just to make everything consistent with the, all the minor choices the fact that you have to report from one episode to <coughs> another so yeah yeah the dealing with the consequences of each choice is, is quite difficult we've got like huge uh, excel file or, uh, files with uh, a lot of different outcome it's it's quite complicated uh also dealing i think maybe with um, the fact that we are french developers yeah, and we wanted exactly. to to make a, a game about uh, american teenager in oregon so we want we wanted to do it right and yeah. uh, so that's why also we work with christian divine um uh, a great writer and we we are doing a lot of research to be sure that we are accurate and that we yeah. hope that some teenager from Oregon could recognize uh, some stuff and feel that this is realistic and this is the kind of problem problems you can also encounter as a teenager. This is the kind of mm -hmm. high school you could be in. So yeah, it was a great challenge. And yeah. I would say to finish, maybe the rewind. The rewind <laughs> was on the <laughs> paper, it's a great idea, but yeah. in a technical point of view, uh, yeah, other team has, has to make a lot of effort. Yeah. The develop, develop team and the level designers is yeah, it's quite complicated to think about all, all the outcomes, all the, yeah, the technical issue you can, yeah. Yes, Sometimes you say, okay, get rid of the rewind. <laughs> <we> <laughs> uh, no, don't get rid of the rewind. <laughs> and, and <laughs> and yeah, we've got <laughs> it, so yeah, it's cool. And even on a, on a narrative point of view, yeah. the rewind and the time travel is always really hard to deal with. To yeah. deal with. So that was, we worked hard on this and it was quite hard. <laughs> okay. Um, so another question. Uh, so this is from Johnny A. Um, what encouraged you to explore uh, teenage issues in a game? Obviously, mm -hmm. it's it's not really been done before uh, that yeah. we've seen. Um, you know, why 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 these why these themes? Um, um, we, we think that when teenage when you're a teenager, it's a really it's a really hard time. Teena it's it's a really violent world for for teenagers because we started the game as there is this teen drama layer on the game, but teenagers are. It is really a world when it's really interesting to, to talk about all those issues teenagers are having. And we, we, to we talked, about, talked about it already, like, you know, social media bullying or mm. violence or isolation. There is, it's really a reflection of, of the human world and everything is quite, quite violent and, and condensed when you're a teenager. And also, since we are having a game about a coming of age story uh, with choice and consequences, it was the right period of time to, to have our story here because when you're a teenager, you're still free to become whoever you want. You still can make choices, decide what studies you will, you will make later. And you're really building your life at this moment of your life. And it was for us the, the perfect metaphor for this choice and consequence story. Yeah, yeah. and this, those, all those teams we wanted since the beginning of the project talk about them. And uh, it's like you can have in novels or movies some using the uh, video game media uh, mm. to talk about those things was really important for us and we can see a lot of projects in, uh, in the indie, indie games uh, becoming more and more about those themes and I think it, it's really cool to see the video game talking also about, about those and all the feedbacks we have from the community just telling that they are not f uh, they are not feeling um, uh, um, they are less alone b mm. with this game because they see that there is other people uh, feeling like, them, like themselves, I think it's really cool. It, it's why also we are doing video games, to to give hope to people and to talk about those, mm -hmm. those things. So yeah, it's, it's really cool to see some feedback yeah. like this. Yeah, and the game uh, it handles uh, quite quite some mature themes, but you, you guys have, have handled that really responsibly. And uh, we, we, you even set up um, like, like a help page uh, for those who might have experienced these issues, which was um, lifestrange.com slash talk, uh, which appears at the end of the game. And, and that's, that was really awesome to see. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so, um, oh, we did, did we just see a bit of, uh, a bit of Nathan there being, being nasty Nathan, uh, <laughs> as, as always. Um, so how difficult was it? Uh, so this is from, uh, Niall Gallagher. Uh, how difficult was it to adapt time travel into a narrative? So was it hard to get things like the butterfly effect, right? Because there's a, there's a lot of dialogue choices. Uh, it must have been really, really complicated to kind of you know, fit that in. If you want to change your choice, rewind, and it, it, you know you've got you've got two separate situations for each scenario. Yeah, uh, I think we are also uh, 
uh, chosen to begin small, that mm. means in the episode one, it's really an introduction to this power, just you using it uh, in a small way or I easy way. And after we will add some layers, uh, as you uh, have seen in the next episode, because we were used to design some scene with this power. Uh, in episode one, it was, yeah, each scene was. Uh, a new discovery uh, to yeah. the okay we've got another problem okay we've got another problem so after the episode one we knew what we could we could do or not so but yeah on a narrative point of yeah, view it's yeah, quite complicated it's to really design complicated the dialogue because you know we, we don't have unlimited resources we cannot do those dialogues with hundreds of branches so yeah. we still need to focus on reducing the number of branches while still keeping the feeling that you have enough choices mm. to be realistic and to be interesting for the player. So it's really a battle, a struggle between production cost and creativity for every time. So we work a lot on with the, with the designer, with the writer, to be sure that we are taking into account everything the player has made and reducing it to what will be really efficient and what will be working. So we have we have a lot of differences. We have you know different text messages based on the consequence you made. We have new dialogues if you rewind and talk to someone because you you learn some new information. We have you receive Max receive different emails based based on the choice of the player. It can be new environment, new characters. There are a lot really a lot of possibilities, and it so we really it's really hard to keep track of everything and to be sure that we are doing the in the efficient way with with our budget. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good questions coming in. Um, so, uh, I think my favorite character is, is Warren. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I kind of like his sort of quirky awkwardness. I'm a little bit awkward sometimes myself. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I just love how, you know, how he's always pursuing Max and uh, like asking him to hang out. Um, so which character can you kind of relate to most or which character is your favorite? Um, this was sent in by Therese. Um, yeah, w which ones? Good question. Uh, Luke, you can begin. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think my, my favorite one, I, I like Warren a lot, like you, but my favorite one is Chloe, of course. Mm. Like, she's super awesome. Uh, she's like the friend you, like, you have that want mm. to do crazy thing that <laughs> always drags <laughs> you into <laughs> things you wouldn't do, but you do it anyway. So, uh, yeah, she's fantastic. Mm. Good stuff. Um, yes, it's a tough one because we, we love all those characters. So, um, they are really great. I think I really, I really love Max. Um, you're Max. <laughs> I don't know if I'm Max. But, um, I, I really love the fact that yeah, she's starting as this sh shy introvert character, but she still uh, she still has a lot of personality. And with with all her inner voices, we are really seeing inside of her what she's thinking about stuff. And she thinks of sometimes clever, she sometimes jokey stuff about how she's she's percepting the the world. And and of course, she's evolving through the whole game. So mm. I think she's a really great character. Yeah, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, Victoria, Nassan, or <laughs> all, the, all the nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, good too. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. And really, uh, for example, vi yeah, Victoria. Uh, I like the way we try to have those characters. Uh, they are not black and white, so yeah. you can find some some aspect of the in in every one in every character that could relate to someone you know. Or this is what we wanted to have. So. You will have for sure some surprise in episode four and five, uh, but yeah, I would I would say I think Chloe also uh, because li like Luke said, is the kind of friend you yeah. at the beginning you hate uh, <laughs> her and at the end say oh it's so cool too. yeah everyone's yeah. got one of those yeah it, it's cool it's <laughs> yeah yeah, it, it, yeah so the kind of friend you take a different path and at the end yeah. think yeah you were a little jealous and uh, in the same time you, you yeah. don't want to be like that. so yeah it's really really interesting the relation between Max and her I think is yeah. really pretty good yeah and going back to what you were saying about how each character is not black and white we're, we're definitely starting to see more of that now as, as uh, the episodes have progressed like uh, Victoria you know I, I'm warming up to it. I, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm starting to see. Uh, you know, there's more. There's more to her than uh, just kind of. You know, being being the nasty girl on on the campus. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting to kind of see. Yeah, that was basically the idea for every character. You know, in episode one, we are really getting into the story. We are. We we, we used some some sometimes some known archetypes for the characters. Mm. So that's a, that's an entry point for the player. We have. So you know we have the shy, the shy girl, the, ner the, the nerd, the, the the football players, etc. So it's quite some the the, the character you, you usually find in teen drama, and in each episode we are really adding other layers to those characters and changing them and making them evolve with the way that will surprise the player and also show that 
in fact in life there is no like like Raoul said nothing in black or white but it's shades of grey for for everyone it was also the, the idea behind the choices we wanted to have not easy cho choices to to make because there is no good choices in fact it's just the way you deal with them and you try to continue to live with them so no black or no white choices yeah I think uh, we've we've all been in a couple of situations where we really wish we could rewind time. Uh, <laughs> some embarrassing moments, but we won't <laughs> go into them. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So next question um, from Christian Gabri. Sorry if I haven't pronounced that correctly. Um, so the game's got a very unique sort of visual style to it. I really really love it. Um, you know. Uh, I think I think it looks beautiful. Um, how, so, how did the idea for the game's visual aesthetic come along? Um, it, it's, it's it's got this very kind of uh, unique sort of painterly style. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Mm. Mm. When we started to to work on on, on on the story, the character, and the game, we, we we knew that we had some some keywords that were really important for the game. And one of the, one of those keywords was nostalgia. Mm. And um, when we were exploring a few different uh, possible art style, we really quite soon in the development so that the game wouldn't work as well with a realistic rendering because um, everything would be so detailed that you would anyway lose the focus and, and just look at some, at some of those details. When you're going for a realistic rendering like we are seeing right now, um, we can let the player put some of his own imagination and some of his own perceptions and memories to, to the pictures he's, he's looking at. And that's, that's really, really what we wanted. We wanted the player to feel the scene, to feel the mood of the scene, the lighting, and not focus on the details. Really focus of on on the on the on the whole picture and the and, and the whole scene and bring some of his own perception. Mm. Um, yeah. So going back to kind of the visual style, uh, the games. I I think the games got two very distinctive color palettes. Uh, so uh, you know, as we can see behind me right now, there's there's, there's, there's a, a difference for when kind of some bad things are going on. Mm. Uh, it becomes kind of gray and a bit dull, a bit bluey. Um, mm. Uh, but but then there's these these really beautiful sort of sunlit uh, uh, what do you call it the golden uh, hour golden the, hour. the yeah. golden hour yes thank the you the magic hour the magic yeah. hour um, yeah it's it's really interesting to see and um, the kind of contrast when when different things are going on um, was was that uh, intentional yeah. yeah yeah of course we yeah. got like two yeah panel for yeah, yeah. Uh, li exactly like you said yeah. we, we, we could show you this this is kind of uh, Gray or blue, yeah. um, maybe more, more vivid. yeah, livid stuff, and uh, we will have again yeah. some scene uh, like this yeah. uh, in the next episode. But um, yeah, and having like uh, Michel explains a like warm and moody atmosphere, mm. uh, yeah. very nostalgic yeah. atmosphere with a more yellow and autumnal the tones. Th the idea was really to have this feeling of almost putting the player into into a cocoon, into something that's really cottony. Um, we really wanted the light, the light, the lighting to be part of the scene. To almost the light is almost a, one a character in each scene, and this was something that should reflect the, this nostalgic feeling and the, um, this softness of, of, of youth. And of course, it contrasts with some scenes that are really more harsh and contrasted and, and vivid to show the, the violence uh, the, the characters might be and the teenagers, every teenager might be confronted with. So, so it's, ver it's very, I think it would be very interesting at some point to share maybe with the fans some of these uh, uh, early documents, because yeah. like Raoul said, these color palettes you mentioned were indeed uh, something that, mm. that the team worked on. Mm. And also, for example, the, the Chloe's room, the, the concept, one of the uh, early concept of the Chloe's room, of Chloe's room compared to the actual resulting game are are extraordinary. It's extra extraordinary to see how the team managed to reproduce the same feeling mm. that were in the early concept art. Yeah, uh, I'm sure uh, you guys would love to see that back home. So maybe, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> we will made see. A promise. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. <laughs> um, so uh, we've got we got a couple more questions uh, coming in. Um, <laughs> so uh, big <laughs> big question. Um, it's on everyone's mind. Uh, you know, what are we talking? Are we talking uh, waffle or bacon uh, or <laughs> or uh, pancakes? So, <laughs> so yeah, most important uh, I guess, choice I guess in the world. Yeah, I, I'm glad that the 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 design team introduced a vegetarian option for me. <laughs> it's, it's where I always choose uh, like always. the pancake or the waffle, even though it's digital bacon, so I could choose it without killing any 
any pig, I still, <laughs> <laughs> I still <laughs> vote for the yeah the vegetarian one. And yeah, it's quite this question is quite crazy because we have uh, we have made a presentation at PAX like some months ago, and uh, we were yeah. uh, playing yeah. the scene uh, in live. And when we arrive at the, you know, it, it's not a question in the diner. I think it's the one with Joyce. But in the diner, it was like every all the crowd that were <laughs> fighting yeah. just for these yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was eventually they came to, an, uh, to an, uh, an agreement. They wanted, I think, the bacon. And yeah. and Adam, who was playing, just choose the opposite. So ah, like he, he went like against, yeah. Yeah. He went oh against no. the popular the right. popular choice. So we've got a, a riot. Why, and why did you it do was that? Horrible. <laughs> Well, it f it, for me, it was easy. It was it was bacon, bacon all the way. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Can't can't beat it. Takes a <laughs> <laughs> um, So, are you guys uh, enjoying E3 so far? Uh, it's been a great show. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's our first E3 uh, for yeah. for the two of us. It's mm. really impressive to see. We've been to to Gamescom already, <laughs> but to to packs, but seeing how the with all the screens, the sound, it's it's really huge. But for as we have a lot of work, we still have to work on the morning <laughs> remotely with the French team. So we've not seen that much. We've been able just to see few few things. <laughs> just uh, yeah, just ten meters around. Yeah. 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 To be honest, yeah. I didn't I didn't play any game. I didn't have yeah. the time to play any game. I just worked a bit, but it's it's awesome. Yeah, and it's cool because um, for the one at E3, we can see the Life is Strange trailer in a u on a huge screen. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Between That's Deus Ex and. Uh, and it man, so yeah, it's it's, it's, cool. it's cool. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great to see it out there on the show floor being played. Um, a lot of people have come by and enjoyed it. It's, it's been awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, another question. Uh, <laughs> what is this one that's coming here? Uh, so when creating the game, did you guys expect that this game would have as much emotional impact on people? Because I know from you know personal experience uh, and several others of the community. It's had a big, big impact on people. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of your guys, your guys' let's play. Sometimes you know, tears, yeah. tears <laughs> have come. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, we, yeah we're really happy really that it works. And like we said before, I think it's also because of the the sims we deal wi with. And I think the the most important thing is to have great characters. You know, we wanted really, really a character-based story. So we really wanted to improve, improve those characters for the players to uh, feel links with them. And mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is it's working a little. So it's, it's cool. And also the Sims, that as even if we are like uh, adults, uh, I think we, you you will always remember this period, this difficult period. It can be uh, as. A to be a teenager, so I think yeah, it can it can bring some something uh, yeah. for yeah. the players. Uh, I think it's w it's working, so mm. it's good. Yeah, but we are so proud uh, yeah. to see all those feedbacks. It's yeah. When when we started to work on the game, we really didn't. I think we didn't ask ourselves the question if it would have this impact or not. We we were really focused on on creating the game and the story we would wa we wanted to create and we would like to play uh, as players and and we really. I think at the, at the beginning we really said, said to ourselves we won't even think about what target audience or what or, or about marketing points, and we really focused on creating what the story we we thought would be the best one, and we were really happy that Square Enix to loved this project and, and and accepted the game as it as it was. So it's cool, and seeing that the result is working, that is working so well with the players and the response is great. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you guys are on Twitter pretty much every day, every night, yeah. reading everything. <laughs> Those two are crazy yeah. with yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So we have to make Raul read the, like the same yeah. because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me like a, uh, a sum up of the, all the stuff. It was good. It's good. It's yeah, great. We just love reading the, the feedbacks of the player. So we we are really reading them. So that yes. Yeah, and <laughs> even when like Michel said that uh, yesterday when we are working late at the office because yeah. we have to. Uh, Some say, okay, let's do like a, t a Twitter uh, uh, motivation uh, yeah. <laughs> lecture. <laughs> oh, that's so great! It's, it's really cool, yeah. It's yeah, because we, we're also doing that for for, for the players, mm. and uh, I yeah, it gives uh, like we already said a lot of strength to the team to know that we we are doing also the game for for mm. a huge community, and so yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. That uh, see, you guys are, are keeping them going, keeping them motivated. Yeah. Keep, yeah. To, uh, <laughs> Thank you. keep keep Thank those you tweets coming in um, for their for their long nights. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, did you guys ever, you know, 
Max has got this fantastic power of being able to rewind. Um, I, I would certainly love that power. Um, yeah, we've, we're starting to see her use it in different ways now. It's, it's, she's she's kind of um, you know, getting more used to it and finding new ways of using it. Um, but did you guys consider any other powers for Max uh, before going with time manipulation? Or was it always, from the start, Max was going to have this power? Um, I think it, it was always from the start with time manipulation, mm. but we've explored a lot of variations and possibilities on how we can use this. Yep. Could it be rewind or free or freezing or a lot of lot of variation you can do with time but we really wanted to to talk about time manipulation because this was the, the basics of how d we designed this story with the, the choice and consequences and this butterfly effect and the fact that this is a coming of age story where max really has issues to go forward and mm. the, the time manipulation was working well but, but i think yes we have when we were working on the design we we explored a lot of Maybe you can talk about some of the possibilities we've we've explored. Or yeah, like yeah, like I said before, there was a lot of characters so at the beginning. So yeah, we wanted to be sure that this is the right power, also with the right characters. So it's little by little that okay, Max is a little shy, so maybe it it hasn't to be an offensive power. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also the right power for the character of Max. So this is all we end with yes. with this one. But mm -hmm. yeah, at the beginning it was like. So many uh, uh, weird ideas, yes. with, uh, and we had at a point to settle with some rules, and mm. that's that's what you have in game. And the way that time travel works in our game is all the rules we we worked with with the game designers, with the writer, to be sure that everything is consistent and working f to give the player the best the best experience possible when he when he's playing the game. Yeah. Um, it's got a really cool effect when you when you rewind. It's really cool to see everything moving <laughs> around the scene uh, with you. Um, and it's got that really cool sort of camera exposure effect, which ties in really nice with um, Max, as uh, obviously a photographer at mm. uh, Blackwell. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's really nice to see. And um, I've ne I've never played a game where I, where I can do that before. Uh, like <laughs> you were talking um, when you talked about the color tones yeah. and the stuff, it's also linked to the photographic uh, yeah. aspect. We wanted really to, yeah, to all the elements of the game uh, stick, stick together. And uh, yeah, of course, Max will keep uh, the o his her old camera because she's a little nostalgic also. She don't want to, to grow up too much. This is this kind of small things we wanted to be coherent, uh, co coercive. Um, uh, yeah, so photographic, uh, art and elements, yeah. uh, all the, the FX guy uh, quite a great genius to add mm. all those elements uh, when you you use your power we wanted really to have this uh, light clicks and, uh, and, and double exposure stuff yeah. And, yeah. Mm. good cool um, okay so we just got a couple more and uh, and then we're gonna show you show you a little video um, okay so uh, you know, there are quite a lot of like little very little subtle things dotted around uh, the world, and I absolutely love finding each one of them. I think I think one of my favorite examples is when um, you're you're walking the corridors and you see something on the wall saying, "Oh, I've lost my uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my uh, portable computer or my laptop." Yeah. And then further down the hall, <laughs> I saw <laughs> on the notice board like selling computer with 15 gig of cat pics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, these have been <laughs> fantastic to see. Have, been, uh, have they been kind of fun to put in or, yeah, or yeah, work yeah, on yeah. here? This is, yeah, we, we really wanted to, since the beginning of the project, to have this slow pacing aspect in the game. It, me it means that we wanted the player to even push them to take their time and to look around, to look at a lot of different objects. Um, I think it's important to give some reward for that. Mm. So, mm. Like you say, I think when you find by yourself those kind of funny stuff it's it's quite you wouldn't say oh cool so we want to discover more and more and this is a uh, the same idea behind for example what we call uh, the, the zen sequence mm. sequences <laughs> when you sit on the fountain and we we had some voiceover of max telling something about the world about herself and we add some layer of the music it's this kind of we yeah. you give to the player who will push them to to take their time and to explore the world and we really wanted to do that s since the beginning because sometimes, for example, in a previous game, it's more uh, like action game, so you don't have the time because this is not the kind of game when uh, the designers are 
uh, ah, they are not letting the time so sometimes to the player. Here we really wanted to, to let the time to the player to explore and to mm. see stuff. But yeah, there is a lot of hidden stuff like that. Mm. Very s it could be very small stuff, but yeah, but th that's what that creates that's what creates a, a world. There's every every small detail is important yeah. because it's it creates a, a, a story and it, it it makes the player feel that the world is is living, that it's a real world. And even when you're revisiting places, the, the, some of the stuff will have changed, of course, because it's another day. And the player should really look around. There is really a lot of hidden stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we put also some, a lot of hints uh, from one episode to another. Uh, yeah, you can find a lot of s cool stuff. There you go. <laughs> so make sure you explore when you're playing. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, the, aver the average sort of runtime is about two to three hours for the game, but. I probably spent about four and a half because I was just <laughs> looking at everything, cool. picking everything up. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great and um, interesting that there are some hints hidden. So um, yeah, be sure to uh, have a look, guys. Um, cool. So there are all our community questions. Um, thank you to everyone that has sent one you. in. Thank, um, you. thank um, you. Sorry we couldn't answer all of them. There, there were a, a ton. <laughs> um, but I will be in touch with you personally uh, to get you one of these shirts. Uh, we also do have another shirt, which is Max's shirt. So um, I'll let you pick which one you want. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm just gonna, we're just going to chat a little bit more um, generally about the game, and then we are going to play the new E3 trailer. Uh, so you guys can check that out if you haven't already seen it. Um, so, episode three. Uh, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, it 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 ended pretty. Uh, it was big. It was a big. <laughs> yeah, emotionally a big ending. Um, uh, yeah, it it shocked me. Um, but uh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Um, and we're really starting to see the game sort of ramp up now, like. Uh, episode one was very much an introduction to the series, um, and very much an introduction to the power. Um, it, it's, it does feel like a TV show, and I, I know that's what you guys intended uh, with you know the, the pacing. Uh, you, know, you got the, you got the pilot, uh, and as it goes through, uh, things start start getting a bit more interesting. Um, has it been really uh, has it been really cool to kind of build build up suspense because you've done it episodically? Has has that been enjoyable? Yeah, th yeah, yeah. This is uh, also why we wanted to make an episodic game. Since the beginning of the writing, we we had like five episodes. So, since the we 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 have worked with um, a French uh, writer, Jean-Luc Cano, who was working uh, for TV shows and movies. Uh, and since the beginning, we wanted to have this, uh, like you said, this different way of telling a story. It means that we will have like two and three hours per episode when you can um, make the character evolve, can mm. talk about um, different themes from one episode to another. So we knew that we wanted really to keep that. And also, uh, also of course, the to control a little the way the player will play, to know that the player will play like two hours, three hours, or one each episode, and having this cliffhanger at the end, it's, it, it, it's really great to think about yeah. that. And it's, it's what, what is working for TV show, of course, uh, at the end of a lot yeah. of episodes you're like ah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and cool. uh, it's, 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 it, for the game it's really interesting to have it and uh, we have seen uh, also other companies doing that very well and yeah really good cool uh, okay so guys we are just going to play you the new uh, E3 trailer that we put together uh, which shows you what's happened in Arcade Bay so far so here we go spoiler for I would look away now to uh. spoil Oh, yeah, my. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> and there she is, a lovely young woman. Imagine a world without you American girls I'd like to What the hell is this? Be part of the world around you That's Rachel Amber. Something happened to her. I want to 
want proof you can rewind time? No! Come on, Slowpoke! What are you doing here, Mac? I wish I could rewind back all the way to this day and change everything. Oh my god. Cool. Um, so that's the uh, new trailer uh, to round it up. And uh, we are out of time. So thank you for everyone that has tuned in and watched. And if you weren't able to w catch the stream, uh, this is being recorded so you can check it out later on. Um, so my name is Scott. And thank you, Raul, Michelle, thank you. and Luke. Thanks, thank thank you so much. Um, for more information on Life is Strange, you can go to www.lifeisstrange.com. Uh, and that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so bye. much. Thank you. Thank Thanks. Bye-bye.